Hi, this is Josh Olson. You're watching Trailers from Hell. And today we're going to go cross country on a cattle drive with John Wayne. And in the process, we're going to become men. We're also going to talk about what a miserable, no good son of a bitch Bruce Dern is. Here it is, the Cowboys. This is one of the great John Wayne films. It didn't really get the love when it first came out. It was late in his career, and Wayne was unfashionable among the cineast crowd at the time. But man, does it ever hold up. By the way, that's not the title of the film. The title of the film was The Cowboys. I think this was done just for the trailer. The premise is simple. John Wayne is an aging ranch owner who needs to get a herd of cattle cross country to sell, or he's gonna lose the farm. All of his regular cow hands run off when they hear rumors of a new gold rush, and they leave him empty handed. So in desperation, uh, Wayne goes off to the local schoolhouse and roused a bunch of schoolboys to go with him. So the film is about John Wayne and a bunch of cowboys driving cattle cross country. And in the process, of course, they become men. The film's a pleasure, and it's packed with terrific performances from Wayne, his young cast, many of whom went on to long careers, such as Robert Carradine and the great A. Martinez, as well as a magnificent turn from Roscoe Lee Brown as the cook who goes along with them. Brown gets the best lines in the film and knocks them all out of the park. There's also a wonderful scene with the great Colleen Dewhurst as a madam who offers to usher the boys into manhood in her own particular way. But at the heart of it, there's one performance that stands above all the others, a performance that defined a career, maybe even came close to ruining it, and that is Bruce Dern. And at this point, I gotta say, if you haven't seen The Cowboys, or if you don't know what Bruce Dern does in this movie, you need to stop listening to me and watch the film, because I'm gonna spoil it for you. There's no way to talk about it without talking about the despicable, horrible, morally repulsive pugnant, cowardly, un-American thing that Bruce Dern does in this movie. He does something that very few people ever did in John Wayne movies. Seriously, this is your last chance. Stop watching now if you don't know, because you need to see this fresh with, uh, he kills John Wayne. Bruce Dern kills John Wayne in the worst. Oh, it's just horrible. It's horrible to watch. Wayne, of course, dies like a man. How else would you expect John Wayne to go? Dern shoots him in the back a bunch of times, shoots him in the knees. He's, ugh, he's just horrible. And for years after seeing this film, it was impossible to look at Bruce Dern and, and see him as anything but that, that horrible villain. Eventually, he just he stuck it out long enough, giving enough great performances that that in time the uh, the, the, the stigma wore off. But but I still to this day, uh, you know, I, I look at Bruce Dern and I see that that man. And let me be clear, Bruce Dern is one of the great great actors in American film. He's an American treasure. But for decades, I couldn't look at him without thinking, ah, there's a son of a bitch who killed John Wayne. Even when he plays good guys, it's still a little hard to swallow. I have to remind myself it's just a role and he's just an actor, but one hell of an actor. The director, Mark Rydell, is an interesting choice for the film. He went on to do, among other films, on Golden Pond and the River. He was also a terrific actor, most memorable as one of the most brutal sadists you've ever seen in film in Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye. 